Welcome. Thanks for joining me for Pathfinder Kingmaker. We just took care of our quest with Knock Knock, and I think we uh, did a rather poor job with that. <laughs> and I think it maybe come back to hurt us in the end. He, uh, let me get this set. We need Lindsay too, I think, for this. Um,. I guess we'll swap out her room. Okay. Yeah, we, uh... We let Knock Knock kind of handle the situation and ended up with a hill giant headed toward our capital and a group of drunk goblins. Um, so we're going to see how that turns out. Inconsequent debates. Let's head up here. Oh, first, let's level up Mr. Jubilost here. Okay. The rest is in order. Well, I think we never rested in the capital, but everybody else is okay. Interesting. Okay, maybe we should make camp. And we're going to have to figure out... Where, oh, Jubilas can cook. Okay. You see the way I lopped that guy's head off? Is Ragongar awesome or what? <laughs> Your fighting style is efficient, but terribly rude and inelegant. If you were my servant, I'd teach you some manners. She would teach him some manners. This could be interesting. Uh, not sure what to expect here. I kind of doubt there's going to be a lot of fighting, but you never know. This debate could get out of hand. Debates can be pretty raucous. It's interesting. It's called the inconsequent debate. I think I read that right. Like inconsequential. A very pale gnome with dull, brittle hair is scribbling something busily on a small scroll, not looking up as you approach. Ah, here you are. At last, go read the rules quickly. They're posted a little further along. The other teams already arrived a while ago. The host said we'll start as soon as you show up and read the rules. Of course, I'm famous enough for my admirers to follow my every move. But still, I'd like to know, how did you know we were coming? The gnome shrugs. The host said so. Well, are you going to keep wasting time? Read the rules and we'll start. Okay, read the rules. And I should have paid attention when he was talking about where the rules are. This time. Okay, fixing his glasses, Jubilost looks at the paper, describing the rules. Well, let's see. I'll read out loud so that everyone can hear. Rules of the inconsequent debates, year to be added later. I see the authors didn't overstrain themselves. So the rules, item one, obey the host and everything. Item two, come in triplets. Okay, so it's Deo, Lindsay, and Jubilost. Item three, no fighting, no killing each other, even temporarily, even if you really want to, even if you apologize later. Okay. Item four, the most important one, the participant must assume the shape of a giant frog. 
Dublas looks puzzled. A frog? What does that have to do with anything? Are those the right rules for the competition? What irresponsible word monger ma- What is this? I am a frog. Uh oh. <laughs> Something is obviously wrong here. Oh, failed that. Examination offers nothing, just like anything else that involves the Fae. The rules scroll looks ordinary and suspicious at the same time. I don't know what to believe. Maybe it's supposed to be like this. So we're just going to leave it as it is? Let Lindsay buy us some time. I'll talk to the other participants. Don't worry about anything. I'll go run to the host and ask him a few questions for my book. It'll buy you some time. You start looking for whoever is responsible for this. Find the culprit. A little kobold raises his little snout at you. Greetings. Are you participating in the debates? Yes, participate. Participate. Amazing. We'll be competing against the inarticulate kin of unforgettable Tartuk. Kobold looks at Jubilast with interest. Huge frog, you speak? Can me mount you? I feed you ants, clean you skin. I am Ryder. In the list of all the job offers I've ever received, that will be honorably placed in the I'm ready to cry section. Why do you have those gerboas there with them? Kobold lowers his head. Faye say, need three. I know three. I know friends. Wanted to go very much. Caught this jump mice. Now we are three. Participate. It's like a spell was cast over my friend when he read the rules. Did anything like that happen to you? I don't read. Gnome help me. Read for me aloud, but then scream. I scared. So what do you want to ask the host if you win? I, dragon. How become dragon? All right. <laughs> See you. About this guy, Sir Alfrey. Greetings, I am Sir Alfrey, loyal follower of the tentacles of Ayumide, Ayumide, knight, noble, and crusader from Mendev. Tentacles, oh yes, my knightly motto used to be courteous even in death, but I am afraid it must now be changed to severing the tentacles of evil. In just a few phrases, he managed to pour more pomposity on us than I can manage in a week. Quite a talent. Tentacles of evil? And why is it that you want to change the motto, sir? You see, upon my arrival, I immediately went to read the tentacles of the event. But Guile already had me in, it, in its tentacles. The rules were charmed, and everyone who reads them must say tentacles every so often. Which is happen happening to me just now. Tentacles. If I can't get rid of this affliction, at least, tentacles. I can make it into my motto. Did you try to talk to the hosts about this? I did, in the name of tentacles, but Faye think that cheating within the rules is tentacles and perfectly appropriate. As a true knight, I must overcome these tentacles resolutely. Do you have any idea who could have done this to the rules? It was done by one of the participants who allowed their tentacles to guide their heart. Including you and me and my tentacles, four teams of three arrived, I swear by my tentacles, my service to the most honest Ayumide would never allow such tentacles. Nor would I suspect you and your outstanding companions, noble tentacles all. Look for the villain among the other two teams. So you're a Mandavian crusader. Truly spoken, I hope you have heard about our glorious tentacles. Our order fights demons fearlessly, preventing their tentacles from spreading across the world. You don't often meet an Asimar in these lands. Asimars are not so uncommon in our tentacles. Celestials are known to aid Mandavian crusaders in our war against the demons. Sometimes this camaraderie sparks a tentacle. I mean, personal attraction. But just the presence of a holy celestial nearby can sometimes cause the birth of an Asimar child. See? Easy as tentacles. Are you participating in the debates? I most certainly am, by my tentacles. Come here to carry out the will of my tentacles and set a good example for my tentacles, and possibly to find a new way to fight tentacles. 
that is, demons. If I win, the Fae might answer all my tentacles. Before you leave, let me ask you, and in the name of tentacles, don't consider it idle curiosity, what need brought you to the tentacles debates? That would be me. I asked for the Baron's help in this tentacles... Uh, <laughs> In this endeavor, because winning will let us ask what made the tentacles. Ahem. What caused the gnomes to leave the first world? For me, these tentacles are something more than mere scientific curiosity. Was he saying tentacles too? <laughs> I'm amazed at how inquisitive the tentacles of your mind are, sir. I admit it's the first tentacles that I've ever talked to such a learned frog. Tentacles. Forgive me for my ignorance, but it never even crossed my feeble tentacle... But there are educated ones among your race. That's a lot of tentacles. For the love of Desna, I am not a frog. Let it be known to you, sir, that you are speaking to Jubilas Narthropel, well-known publicist and researcher. This shape, but the consequence of a silly prank. I am a gnome, and that is why I am participating in the debates, to learn how my race received the affliction called the bleaching, and discover a way to fight it. In that case, I wish our worthy rivals good tentacles. In the name of truth, justice, and tentacles. <laughs> okay. Tentacles. What do we got over here? Some more frogs. Can't talk to them though. Try this guy again. Pale Gnome reads aloud enthusiastically, and the young wizard desperately thrashed about in his fetters, all but all in vain. The shoots of the plants held him tightly. The nymph, cruel and beautiful, sneered at him, and immediately. And immediately what? Okay, the frogs are talking. And immediately anything. The left frog is mocking the right one. Does this book ever end? I thought the wizard would die in the last chapter while he was running from the horde of unicorns through fields of giant fly traps. Oh, like you understand anything about literature, you stupid toad. The gnome looks at you. Ah, hello again, travelers. It seems I haven't introduced myself. I'm Nerd Zottenroppel, and these two idiots are my brothers, Vyar and Luar. So what did the nymph immediately do to the wizard? It's too much to tell. She keeps him hostage for another four chapters. I like it when it's more like real life. In this author's last book, he escapes from the evil wizard in five minutes. Why are you calling those frogs your brothers? Haha, ha, these fools read the rules, read the rules, and the rules are charmed. Nerds colorless and dim eyes. Nerd. I just got the... We always have a nerd running this debate. Or is he a participant? He's the one that met us here, but maybe he's just another participant. Either way, it's good to have a nerd at the debate. Anyone who reads them turns into a frog, so now I have two frog brothers. I guess I'll leave them as they are. When else will I ever have a chance to laugh so much? Why are they both frogs? Did they read them together? Yes. Nah. Shut up, Luar. Of course we did. We read them and we transformed. Now we're sitting and croaking. The little kobold said one of you helped him read the rules. Yeah, that's true, but he wasn't trying to read the frog rules. They're different on every poll. One turns you into a frog, another makes you say tentacles, and the third one makes you scream like crazy. Hilarious, right? Not remotely. You look pale. She looks bleached. Jubilas' voice is grim. I lost track of who we're talking about. One of the frogs? Is Nerd a girl? Anyway, it's alright. I've still got a fair bit of fight left in me. The Zot and Ropples don't go down easy. My brothers and I lost our color long ago, but death still hasn't taken us. Are you participating in the debates? Sure, although really we're just here to see the show. We figured it would be fun, and we were right. You are confused, my friends. If one of you read the rules for the kobold, why isn't one of you screaming? 
How was it that both of your brothers were turned into frogs? And if Nerd already saw what happened and knew the rules were charmed, then why did she tell us to read them? Okay, Nerd is a girl. Do you suspect us of something? Why would we charm the rules and read them ourselves? Or make you read them and put a spell on you? Nerd adjusts her ridiculous helm and strikes a rackish pose. Because you're gnomes, only a gnome could think of playing a joke on everyone around and then joyfully get caught in their own prank. You're far-sighted and loud-voiced. I like you. Okay, let's let's stop this immediately and release Jubilast. Croak. Croak, croak. We're just stupid frogs and we understand nothing. Nerd pretends not to hear anything. Deo, I know this is unexpected, but let's just leave it be. I'm ready to participate in the debates, even like this, croaking all the way. Okay. Alright, let's just let it go. Jubilast sighs with, the re with relief. Ah, there you are. Glad I found you. I stalled for as long as I could, but now it's time to begin. Let's go quickly. Okay. The host. The hooded creature looks mundane, but after looking for a time, one might notice the figure's contours tremble and flow as in a haze. Welcome to the inconsequent debates. You can call us the host. We are the reason for all that happens here today. You've read the rules, have you not? Not that there is anything useful in them. We only made up the real rules the day after tomorrow. Then forgot them and had to make new ones. So it's simple. You want as your reward for us to answer a question. So the competition will involve answering questions. We ask and one in each triplet answers. And always the same one. The others can only prompt. Let's see. It will be you, little kobold. You, Sir Alfrey. You, nerd, and you, Deo. Remember one thing, here at the Inconsequent Debates, there are no right or wrong answers. Every answer has weight, and each one will be weighed. Don't choose the lightest one, your rival might find a heavier argument. And most importantly, light answers are no fun for us. Why are you referring to yourself in the plural, host? You hear laughter emerge from under the hood. You know very well you've met us, Deo, but it was a different us at a different time. For now, be satisfied that we do not wish to disclose ourselves. Tell us, why do you creatures from the first world need to organize all this? Win the competition and ask. Those are the rules of the game, right? Hell no, we are not wasting a precious question to discover the motives of the Fae and their lords. I don't have the imagination to think how absurd and silly their answer might be. Begins. Kobold jumps from joy. We are ready, despite the tentacles. Alright, let's see how tough they have it in the first world. Some of you look serious, thus we'll begin with a question about weighty matters. What can move a mountain? My grandmother. What do you think, Jubilast and Lindsay? Oh, I shouldn't have skipped my philosophy lessons at the academy. Such problems baffle me. It's not because I can't think of an answer, but because I think of a thousand of them at once and don't know where I can hide from them. Let's see, let's see. We are dealing with Fae in the first world, and they told us clearly that trivial answers won't cut it. I think the good answer is its own will. In the first world, mountains often change position, and there is at least one that does it of its own free will. That's Ulas, one of the Tain, the walking mountain. Okay, I guess we'll go with Jubilast's its own will. We heard you. What will the others say? What can move a mountain? The little kobold frowns desperately. Maybe dragon? Dragon can move mountain. He's going to answer dragon for everything, isn't he? Sir Alfrey, faith and divine intervention. Do you hear my faithful tentacles? Faith nourishes us with devout faith in our tentacles and a righteous cause. Everything is within our tentacles. A teleportation spell. Aha. Uh -huh. I could probably manage moving a hill or two. In fact, that gives me an idea. We have heard you. Now you hear us. Of course, gods and magic can move mountains. 
But that answer is good for any question. How can one jump over the house? Magic. How, can, how to paint a fence yellow using blue paint? Divine intervention. Such light answers are the weakest. A good answer is its own will. Will and desire lie at the base of all our motions, action, and decision. If a mountain has a will, it will surely find a way to move. That was an interesting round. Let the next question be heard. What weakens when owned by many and dies if owned by none? That definitely would be a secret. What do you think, Jubilast? What? I'm sorry. I got distracted. Those mosquitoes are so delicious. <laughs> the frog stops for a moment and then starts to curse. Demons take those mosquitoes. I'll go mad in this shape. So the answer, I think, it's glory. It can't belong to many, otherwise the value of each is diminished. Huh. Pot of soup. It weekends when owned by many and dies if owned by none. I don't think it... Hmm. Glory? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Do we just go with G Blast on this? I mean, a secret is definitely weaker when many people know the secret and no one knows it, and they then it's dead. Hmm. I think since he was distracted, we're going to go with our own gut on this. A secret. The little kobold looks as if he's about to cry. I don't know this. Maybe it's dragon? <laughs> Sir Alfrey, it's the knight's heart. I swear by my tentacles. It can belong to himself or to his righteous cause. Or to his greatest tentacles. It can't belong to everybody. Giant frog. Vire, look how I can roll my eyes. <laughs> And nerd. Fools, concentrate on the competition. This won't do. We won't accept the answers from the Zottenroppel triplet this round, but you are a spectacular eye roller. Now, as for the other answers, the heart is not the best answer, even among knights. There are many whose hearts belong to beautiful women, and a beloved mother, plus their friends, their commander, their righteous cause, and a delicious lunch. Especially a delicious lunch, and it doesn't seem that those hearts that belong to many grow any weaker. A secret is a good answer. The more souls know it, the less mysterious it is. But without a single bearer, it will die. Your triplet wins this round, Baron. Yes. Here's the third question. Each of us is born at the same time with a monster. Each of us is born at the same time with a monster. Each day we live, it grows. It can torment, bring us joy, or kill without a single wound. What is it? An evil twin brother from another timeline. <laughs> what do you say, Jubilast? Considering that question is asked by a representative of the Fae, the answer could be anything from singing to the love of pastries. But let's think logically. The last part of the riddle can easily be ignored because just about anything in the world can aid or ruin you depending on the circumstance. What's important is that the riddle clearly points to some quality or property of a living creature, something that is born with us. Another point, it grows. I would say knowledge. Each new day brings something new, so our knowledge of ourselves and the world keeps growing. For some, though, this process is ridiculously slow. Okay. Now you've ob obviously thought this one through a little better than the last one. Oh, I almost picked the wrong one. Knowledge. Evil twin brother. <laughs> we have heard you. What will the others say? What is the monster? Maybe it's dragon? 
It's curiosity. It is born with us. It grows day by day. It saves us from the bleaching. And if you only knew how many it's killed. I don't know if the answer will do, but the greatest tentacles is the one that lives inside us. We grow a tentacles beast in our soul. We feed it with wrath, neglect, and tentacles. Eventually it could break free and kill us. But tentacles must admit, the same beast gives strength to villains and tentacles. The poison we feed our monsters only nourishes them. Interesting answers, except for the dragon. The dragon doesn't count. Alas, curiosity is also insufficient. The monster we described must, by its own nature, grow. Many see their curiosity dim over the years. We like the answers about knowledge and the inner beast, but both seem somewhat light. We expected something more substantial. We declare that both Sir Alfrey and Deo, along with their triplets, shall share the victory for this round. But remember, the victory shared by two is half the victory. One final trial, and we will sum up the results. I grow tired of questions. Do you know the game Night Dragon Snag? The knight defeats the dragon. The dragon burns the snag. But if the knight walks in the woods, he will stumble on the snag and die. That's why the snag defeats the knight. Like rock, paper, scissors. Children's games. Great. These are the inconsequent debates. Why not play a game? So if you break up into pairs and yell out your chosen word at the signal, the one who shouts knight defeats the one who shouts dragon. The one who shouts dragon defeats the one who shouts snag, and snag defeats knight. We'll play Sir Alfrey against the kobold, and nerd Zottenroppel against the baron. The winners will then play each other. Is the first pair ready? Yell on three. One, two, three. Oh, wow. <laughs> So we're just leaving this up to RNG now. Oh, we. Oh, okay. Sir Alfred says knight. Kobold says dragon. <laughs> of course. <laughs> this was all too predictable, but it's charming in a way. Host is obviously enjoying the game. It's a good thing we didn't look ahead. It's much more fun to see it unfold like this. Sir Alfrey wins. Now for the second pair. Are you ready? One, two, three. Dragon. <laughs> oh wait, dragon is one of them. So the, the kobold actually can't say dragon. I don't know, jeez. Who are we up against? We're up against Nerd. Well... I don't know. We say dragon. That was my gut. I guess we'll go with it. Dragon nerd shouts, performing a spot on impersonation of the kobold, then falls over laughing. Looks like her own amusement is more important to her than the competition. A tie. Let's go again. Great. On three. One, two, three. Dragon. Snag. Ah, damn it. I meant to cheat, but didn't have time to think of how. <laughs> dragon one, one, one. A little kobold is happy for you and your dragon as if it were his own victory. So the Baron wins. Now the winner against the winner. The Baron against the knight. One, two, three. the knight gonna say knight snag sir alfrey takes a deep breath with his mighty chest but then the cruise takes over tentacles <laughs> realizing how their spell has worked nerd and her brothers start roaring with laughter sometimes sniffling with delight the host makes a helpless gesture we cannot but pronounce the baron the winner of this round and now it's time time to announce the winner of the debates 
After four tests, the triplet of the Baron and Sir Jubilast wins. It was most amusing, children. Most amusing. You should know that this is a rare praise from us. Congratulations, sirs and ladies. I swear by my tentacles it was a worthy struggle. Your triplet performed better than we could have imagined. For that reason, you may ask us not one and not two, but three questions. They must be asked by the Baron, the voice of your triplet. Deo, do you remember the fate of the no? Jubilas suddenly stops talking. He opens and closes his mouth, but makes not a sound. Have a silent spell, mate. Haha, <laughs> I love it. Now what's he going to do? Come, brothers, let's run. Now everything is in your hands, Deo. Think well upon your questions. We will answer honestly, but I don't know is also an honest answer. Ask about what a host from the first world might know. This is what Jubilast wants us to ask. Want to know about the bloom. Want to know why you organized all this. Want to know who my love is, with whom I'm bound to tie my knot, tie my lot. Want to know how to gain power and immortality. Any suggestions for a good pet name? <laughs> Okay, Jubilast would be pretty upset if we didn't ask this. Why had the gnomes left the first world? There is the question. We knew it would be asked, but a simple answer, a light answer, has no value, right? We hope our debates convinced you of this. That is why we present to you another answer. A good one, a valuable one. Numbers will help you on your way. One of them is fifth in ten. It will be easy to find if you read Who opened the road for the ancient dead man? and his black feathered messenger. The second is a dozen times in a dozen, and is thrice the number of those who lost their faces. Don't try to guess it now, it's not yet time. Wait until he who is born twice will twice be defeated. Put the two numbers together. When the moon leaves her path near the waters of the candle mirror, find the one who will open the secret. Okay. I hope Lindsay's writing that down. A heap of senseless mumble instead of a... First walk the road, then you may accuse us of being senseless. But in the end, you won't. Okay. So we've got a couple more questions. Well, I would like to know about this affliction, the bloom that fell on my barony. Well, that's an easy one, or is it? Once a very powerful creature from the first world unwisely provoked the rage of those who are a hundredfold mightier. She was cursed and sent here to Galarion to the Stolen Lands. Without going into too much detail, her curse afflicts the locals as well. To put it simply, your troubles will not cease until you've dealt with this uninvited guest. Anyway, we have discussed this further in your tomorrow and my yesterday. Very powerful powerful creature from the first world unwisely provoked the rage of those who are hundredfold mightier. She was cursed and sent here to Galarian. But is this the guardian of the bloom? We have to deal with with her. Maybe. One more question. I want to know why they organized this or something else. They ask about power and immortality. Seems they organized it for their own enjoyment, although it's it's a really rare app. Uh, uh, could this help us? How do we gain power and immortality? One day in the future you will have a chance to let an ancient enemy go in peace. 
We ourselves might even tell you that it should be done. Refuse, and after many hardships, you will be offered power and immortality. But will you agree? Chance to let an ancient enemy go in peace. That was your final question. We have the answer, and yet we don't. But what an adventure. Deo, we'll have to discuss this further on our return to the capital. Farewell, Deo. Ah, uh, we almost forgot. The host turns to the kobold. You, little creature, you didn't win, but you managed to make us laugh. Do you want to come with us? No promises you'll turn into a dragon, but still. The kobold jumps from joy, but then carefully asks, pointing at his gerboas. Take my friends, yes? All right, fine, the hooded creature laughs. Listen all, the inconsequent debates are now closed. We spare all of you the effects of the Zottenroppel tricks, and bid you farewell. Okay. We won the debate. It is done. Anything else you want to say here, Jubilast? Oh. Lindsay? Okay. I believe we're finished here then. Okay, so we can. Back to our regular group here. Okay, so we took care of Knock Knock and Jubilast for now. So I suppose... So we we found Toman's body. Now we're looking into great grandfather. Don't think we have like a quest marker for that yet. We do have some locations over here that we may be able to get to now. We should probably head back to the Varnhold area. Jubilast wants to discuss. So maybe we will head back. Head back home. We can resupply and then head over this direction. See if we can travel back quick. Go back and we'll go to the throne room and see if Jubilast comes to visit. My strength retreats. Finish this up. Okay, let's talk to Zublast. Deo, I never properly thanked you for your help at the inconsequent debates. I'm happy to do so now. I hope you don't think me entirely ungrateful. Have you figured out anything about that riddle? The host's answer to your question about the gnomes. Not quite, but I'm working on it. I'll certainly inform you of my findings. I must admit, such an answer is quite in the spirit of the Fae. It must lead somewhere, and I will find the trail. I was surprised that you didn't want to be freed of the Zottenroppel's spell. Why did you willingly suffer it? Hmm, Jubilus locks his hands behind his back. Well, you see, I understand well what the bleaching is, what a fatal effect it has on gnomes. Those poor fellows were acting like that for no darker motive than desperation. Their foolish jokes allow them to live just a little bit longer. You see, I don't mind becoming the joke myself for a while, of course, and not if my life was being threatened. I'll let someone live a couple days longer. Oh, that was pretty noble of you. That's a worthy act. Stop or you'll make me blush. Okay, remind me about the riddle again. Okay. 
Numbers will help you on your way. One of them is 5th and 10. It'll be easy to find if you read who opened the road for the ancient dead man. There's Black Feathered Messenger. Second is a dozen times in a dozen, and it's thrice the number of those who lost their faces. Don't try to guess it now. It's not yet time. Wait until he who is born twice will twice be defeated. Put the two numbers together. When the moon leaves her path near the waters of the candle mirror, find the one who will open the secret. We maybe need to go to candle mirror at, at sunrise. Okay. Well, I'm sure we're going to revisit that. Let's get rested up so we're ready. And we'll check in here. Fail that. Fail that. Got livestock deaths. Seventy days still on that. Okay. All right then. So next time we will head toward Varnhold again and do some more uh, exploration in that area. We've got this grand great grandfather to find and figure out what happened to everybody in Varnhold. Anyway. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.